Welcome to This Man's Sky. A website called GamePer has released a list of confirmed details on No Man's Sky, so I thought it'd be interesting to read this list out for you. Okay, the first heading is general. It's a science fiction game, coming to the PC but with a timed exclusive for the PS4. Almost everything is procedurally generated. Ships, plants, animals, planets, etc. Meaning there are going to be a very large number of variants of each of those things. All the variations will come from a base model though, and there will be most likely a lot of base models in each category. No saved games, the game will be saved at all times as you go along. But you can't save and load games. If you die, then you will have to rebuild from where you are in the universe. You'll never have to go back and start and try again. The game uses an alternative periodic table to help create environmental diversity. There will be a narrative with a reason for the player's presence and their activities and details of various races that preceded you. You won't be told the narrative, it's up to you to explore and piece it all together and come up with your own interpretations. The atlas will be an important part of the lure. There will be an antagonist of sorts, the malevolent force. Don't expect cutscenes, dialogue or much text within the game. More extensive terrain deformation, ground vehicles and a more traditional multiplayer will come later. The only release date hints that it will be coming soonish as of E3. There have been no confirmations as to what year it will be released, so 2015 that most websites mention is just speculation right now. They know what their release date is, but they don't want to announce it until they are sure they can meet the deadline. Okay, so the second heading is gameplay. You can be affiliated with different factions, however there will be no indication of this. It's simply a case of if you destroy one faction's ship, then they won't like you, or you could help it, and they will. If you have a good status and affiliation, then you will be able to call on AI wingmen using the D-pad. The alternative periodic table ties directly into the game's use of resources, which are used to improve your avatar's suit and weapon and can be traded at space stations to earn money to upgrade your craft or buy a new one. Resources can be combined. There won't be any quests or missions to go on, it'll be up to you to decide what you want to do. The hope is that your natural curiosity and the richness of the worlds presented will be enough to keep you interested. This is a game about exploration. Fun is put above scientific accuracy. Flying between planets won't be long and monotonous, and neither will flying out of an atmosphere. There is an in-game encyclopedia where you can view all of your creatures you've scanned and uploaded. It's basically up to you how to play. The universe is a living, breathing place that just works. Shipping lanes, trading routes, freighters, space stations, planets, and planets all have ecologies. Not an MMO. Everyone will be very far away from each other, but you will feel the impact of other players. It's been mentioned that you can run into other players, but this will be very rare, and the details are very unclear right now. For example, there is the ability to communicate and work with other people. This is something Sean Murray said. He also mentions that he is inspired by how Journey and Dark Souls do it. So if you run into other player, you won't know who they are. It'll always be first person. This isn't a game about staying on one planet and setting up shop. This isn't core to the game. You can stay on one planet if you want though, it's up to you. There will be a compelling reason to head towards the centre of the galaxy, as well as an ending that will provide you with a sense of closure, but there will be a reason to continue playing after that ending. You don't have an inventory, but you do have a sort of bank account. Any employment in the game will net your money and you can use it to buy equipment. There will be ancient artefacts for you to find which could reveal the secrets of the universe. The next heading is the universe. It's the same universe for everyone. Everyone starts in their own solar system, so people will be very far away from each other to begin with. Only significant events are shared between people, so for example, killing a single animal won't be shared. It'll always be dead for you though, but if you wipe out an entire species, then that would be shared with everyone else. There is an offline mode, which would mean that you wouldn't see anyone else's discoveries. The universe is made up of multiple galaxies. The planet within the universe will have a 10% chance of having a life on it, with 90% of them having no life at all. Of the 10% that does have life, 90% of that will be primitive and boring, so the lush green worlds with more evolved life forms on will be rare. 
There will be lots of barren planets, but they can still have valuable resources. Planets will generally only have one type of resource on them. In every solar system, there is one core thing that you can do which is of great significance to the solar system, and that is shared among everyone, and fundamentally changes the solar system, and people can choose whether or not th to do that, and there are a number of mechanisms like that which create emergent gameplay. The next heading is ships. You start with a life pod ship without a hyperdrive, so you'll have to get money to buy a better ship before you can really begin to explore the universe. You can enter a ship almost instantaneously without any labours in animations, using the triangle button. You don't get massive ships, you will stay in quite small ships. You can only buy ships that are docked at space stations. There are three main classes of ships, fighter, trader and explorer. Each class has multiple prototypes. Fighters are light and symmetrical. Trader craft tend to be bulkier and slower, but ha with heavier weapons. Explorer ships will have much better hyperdrives and stealth capabilities, allowing pacifists to run from every fight. Each ship will have between one and three different armaments attached, and you'll be able to upgrade them. Enhancements are hinted to be more interesting than simply more power, a faster rate of fire. They are not defined in the game a specific class, but it should be obvious by the visible hints what craft it is designed for. A certain type of ship doesn't restrict you to a certain path, but there are of course some ships more suited to a certain task than others, but you'll always be able to change to a different type of ship. The cockpit of the ship will be a lifeboat, so if the ship is destroyed then you go back to your life pod and you've lost that ship. You'll have the equivalent of a whistle to call your ship over so long as it's close by. After a while, the wear and tear of your craft is clearly visible, helping you to form an emotional attachment to your beaten up old ships. There's a generous targeting system that only requires you point your nose near a bogey to loose off a few missiles or two. You don't need to be really accurate. You can pull low above the surface and climb out up into mid-air before returning to the cockpit, flying around some more. Landing will be simple and straightforward. Space combat will be arcadey. Battleships will be found further into the galaxy, where combat will also be harder. Fuel will be really expensive and is used to travel from one solar system to the next, like a hyperjump. A quick and cheap way to get fuel is to go down to a planet and do some mining but you can also make money other ways and use that to buy fuel. Okay, so the last section is called planets. Planet-sized planets. On the ground you have a jetpack which will need to be earned, controlled by the X button. You'll have a mini-map which will show points of interest such as a resource, rich areas and landmarks that you or others have uploaded. You won't know what it is until you get there. Um, I just want to point out now I do know there's also a galaxy map, um, so whenever people find things, you can also uh, see them on your map as well. Okay, back to the list. Other points of interest include crash ships, beacons, something to discover like mountain ranges, a vast lake, new species of creatures. You can name things that you discover first, such as plants, planets, creatures, etc., but they will all have Latin names by default, which will appear larger than the player's name. Okay, well this one um basically i don't believe this at all i think whoever's written this um has looked at the trailers and i have checked out a lot of these facts and they're pretty much true um but this one seems like a load of rubbish i think basically the dev team when they're displaying the game came up with their own names for the planet and filled them in as latin names so that it looked like something professional not silly um, and that's it, because there's no way in an infinite universe that every planet you find is going to have a Latin name because there just isn't that many Latin names. It's statistically impossible. Um, so I think that is made up. Back to the list. Suits and weapons can only be upgraded at trading posts and planets. Upgrades include allowing you to breathe underwater for longer or survive in toxic environments, etc. You will have a multi-tool which will act as a scanner weapon and mining tool square to use the scanner okay i'll just say that the um the multi-tool i've also seen in an interview with sean murray and he said that is your weapon you don't buy guns or find guns uh 
you upgrade your multi-tool to become a weapon and fire things. There are grenade-like plasma balls. You, you can blow up um, holes in things. There will be combat situations on planets. You have a compass. The heart in the middle of the screen at the top is your compass. There are procedurally generated rooms. The suit nullifies gravity. Okay, so that's everything that they say on this website in this list. It all seems pretty sound to me, apart from the names of the planets. Um, there's a lot of things there that haven't really been mentioned in some of the interviews, but they're pretty damn plausible. So I'm quite happy with this list. I think it gives quite a good insight into the game. I think 99% of it's plausible. And hopefully this information has helped you guys out. So if you're really interested in the game and this stuff has been really helpful to you, give me a little thumbs up. Um, if there's something that you think maybe this person who has written this article has taken liberties with or made up like I thought with the Latin names uh, leave it in the comments because I'd be interested to see what you think is basically a load of rubbish um, and what you think is definitely true so thank you very much for watching guys um, subscribe to my channel if you want to see my journey through this game and my journey to the center of the galaxy or the universe or however the game's going to work and what I get up to because I've got loads of challenges and things I want to do um, and that's it. Just thanks for watching this man's sky. <laughs>